Is this is there a laser workshop? Yeah. Where is it? Where's what? Where's the laser workshop? The laser. Okay, so they're in there right now. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Oh, right there is the one. Thank you. Thank you. Lion. A lion. All right. So if I go to Google and search for a lion and type in silhouette, uh, what I will get is, and if you don't know how to spell silhouette, that's cool. Neither do I. I have a PhD. Uh, right there, <laughs> uh, we can we can go to Google Images, and if we zoom out, we have a whole bunch of lions, uh, and these are all these nice black and white images. So these are really easy to get to. And if you click on one of these guys, you could potentially try dragging it from the browser to Inkscape. That works, except for when it's a weird image with opacity. In so, uh, what I try to tell people to do is we right click on it and we save the image as. And we can drop that on our desktop or somewhere. Uh, okay, there we go. I call this lion. You might want to put your like, name on your file to do some good practice. I tend to save things to desktop. That's also another thing. It's like save your files in a place where you can find them. It's kind of, you know, I know you guys probably know that at this point, but, but the kids I teach during the summer are like, what are files? So, I love them. They're just new. Uh, anyway, so, anyway. <laughs> If you go to uh, do uh, file import in Inkscape, you can grab a uh, file off the desktop here. And uh, when it asks to embed or link, we don't want to link. Link is like, I have a giant file and I don't want to import it. If we embed it, it's going to suck it into our file. It makes it portable so we can move it to other places. We say OK, and here is our line. But our line is a perfect demonstration of the difference between raster and vector in the other sense. Uh, if we zoom in on this, you can see the blurry edges. So this is, this is pixelated. This is because this is a JPEG. And they do, they do this compression thing to basically make it smaller, which is great, except for if you want to make it way bigger, then it looks blurry and terrible, and you don't like that. So with an image like this, however, we can trace this really easily and make it into a vector file. So if you go up here to Path and Trace Bitmap, you should be able to get this crazy looking front. Now, there are a bunch of ways to do tracing bitmap. The easiest way is with brightness cutoff with a black and white image. That's what we do. That's usually pretty fail safe. Uh, you notice, though, we can do colors and grayscale and some other outline things. Thank you, yourself. You're welcome to play with that and see if you can figure it out. But if I go ahead and do brightness cutoff, uh, it, the preview always fails, or at least for me, it always looks like that. But it still is working. Just, just know that it's lying. This is our open source scale. Uh, if, if we then close this and I just grab my line and move it, you can see there's two lines. And if I zoom in, I bet you can guess which one of those is the vector. So one is this nice, clean-cut vector, and the other is trash we're going to get rid of. But uh, if we double-click on this guy, you notice there's a ton of vector points in there, all those different nodes. Uh, and then you can start remixing and playing with it. So my, my favorite thing to do is I always make it a unicorn. So we have our unicorn, or double unicorn. <laughs> I don't know. You can start playing with those nodes. Uh, you can also grab and select chunks of them and like delete them. So there we go, we have an even weirder unicorn. Uh, and uh, or, or I sometimes do mohawks, it's one of my other favorites. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> donate, man. Lines got to do it here. Uh, so we, we can adjust these, these uh, files and objects. Uh, and there's other cool stuff you can do with it, too. Like if we go up to path, uh, we have the simplify button down here. So if you trace something that's enormously complicated, you can go down and simplify. And you don't notice that much what it did. But when I click that, here I'll undo. See, you can see that was before. And we go to object. And uh, I'm sorry, path and I simplify really high. Simplify, simplify. Uh, it kind of makes it curvier, and because what it did is it reduced the number of nodes. Look at how many fewer nodes there are. So if you're trying to handle a lot of node work, this is a way to just cut down on all that. So it smooths the edges, I guess, right? Yeah, it smooths the edges, right? And there's there's a lot of tools and tricks in Inkscape. Actually, the, while we were doing the training for this, I was showing something I didn't even know how to do the other day. That like you can set nodes to talk to each other in terms of curvatures, and so there's all this like really brilliant stuff that Inkscape does. Um, but I didn't want to overwhelm you guys too much. Uh, I want you just to get started on it. And a lot of the time, you will you're going to be more worried about like can I make the shape of the thing that I want than you're going to be worried about you know like the, the specific artist stuff. At least for for the thing you're doing today. Um, and you're likely to also like you can remix from this. Is like, I want to prevent you guys from blatantly stealing things. So if I type in like press fit box, and I go to images here. Here we go. So I found a schematic, just automatically this is a cigarette box that somebody made. 
So I can import this into Inkscape and trace it, or just trace, like literally trace it in the sense of I'm tracing over it, or trace it in the sense of the trace tool that I just used. And I'm already starting with a structured piece of something. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have cool resources online, like if we go to Thingiverse. Uh, now Thingiverse has lots of things for 3D printing. However, they have some other stuff, like we can find my other than the time. Yeah. Uh, the most popular fab lab thing on Thingiverse, although we don't have anything on Thingiverse. do. Anybody, I don't know if anybody plays this game. Uh, a couple of people. Yeah, so uh, you can download my design, and this is set up for later. Um, and so you can have these neat little interlocking mobile piece things. Because one of the problems with the settler boards is they would kind of come apart when somebody gets mad and slams the table, which will invariably happen when you steal their sheet. Uh, and so, you know, like, we, we have this custom thing. And I put this up here, too, because then people can adjust their own art. Is that, like, I, I think the file I had up here, my friend Amber helped me design this. And she did like sheep with sunglasses because they're awesome. One second. I don't know where they are. They might not be on here. Uh, but, but you could also make like your own custom settler board. You could have like the drinking game settlers or settlers space edition or whatever you think is a cool thing. Um, and so this is this is the kind of place you can find files and start by looking at this stuff. And also, what, you know, that open source thing I was talking about is you can share the stuff you make. So the stuff you guys make today, even if you you know. Uh, maybe don't win the competition, you can still share things and somebody else might make it better and you might, you know, be able to get chained into something that's cool. Uh, and also, you know, maybe, maybe they'll get a thousand downloads and they'll be wrong and they give a reward to us, you know, <laughs> we, we can, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, um, I think that's all I wanted to run through. Okay, well, we got 20 minutes. Laser workshop in architecture. Good for him. I'm glad. He has 20 more minutes left over there. An event. An event today. He'll be back by five o'clock or something. We're not so, doing scanning though, right? Uh, we have no That's a goofy hat. Yeah. It's a video camera. <laughs> Charlie but goofy. Uh huh. It's incredibly easy. I don't have a head. I got a head for you. You got a head. It's incredibly easy to do um, scan people if you would like a uh, and jewelry. Ahead of yourself. Anyway, so so over here, the number on top is what we're set to. Set to the degrees Celsius and four o'clock to what the band is at.
connect like a sensor to it that would tell you like if it was full or empty. So I don't know if a light sensor would do anything. Sure. Like, if there were stuff in there, it would be considered like dark, and if it was empty, it would be light. So like if you could connect that to like. I don't know if you can connect it to like an app maybe, where it can be like an alert system, like at this time you need to take it kind of thing, or like you haven't taken it yet when you're doing. I don't know. I think that's a great idea. I think um, Yeah, well, that's just to you. But I like that you're starting from something you want. Yeah, it's kind of like the design from. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't uh, hear you. Um, I, 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 I